Hello, today we're going to be painting a fox in watercolours. The reference photo you can be found on Pixabay by John Pauling. It's a copyright free photo and it's free to use as well, which is also good. My name's Carol Manning and I go under the business name Pekara Arts. I normally paint UK wildlife, sometimes in its habitat and botanicals. So I've got my drawing done and taped down. I'm currently mixing up the paints I'm going to use to paint the fox. I use Windsor and Newton Cotman paints and for the fox I'm going to be using yellow ochre, raw umber, burnt umber, burnt sienna, sepia, black, lamp black and Chinese white. So I will start most of my animal paintings or and bird paintings by getting the eye put in, which is what I'm doing. So I normally start with the face, eyes, nose, mouth, to try and get the character in straight away. Means the little fox is with you the whole way and plus It's an important part to get right at the beginning because if you don't get it right at the beginning you may as well start again <laughs> but it's the most important part is getting the character right in the face so I'm using sepia at the moment to put it this in I'm making a gray color so I'm putting in all the grays around the mouth nose eyes and I'll go on to do the fur and I'll let you watch while I do that. I'm looking carefully at the reference photo to try and make sure I'm putting brush strokes in the direction of the fur. I'm not being 100% accurate. Um, I like to paint fairly realistic looking animals but not photorealistic. You can still see my paint marks. I'm not aiming to be photorealistic. So I'm still working using the sepia but using a mixture of diluted and slightly more concentrated paint in order to get the tonal values.
right, I'm now using a very diluted um, yellow ochre wash to go over all the, the brown areas of the fox for its first undercoat. Now I'm adding in some diluted raw umber to again get some more shadow and depth. For the washes I'm just using a general brush, no particular make um, that I remember, um, series um, sizes 9 and 11 are the sizes I use for washes. I'm now going over with a diluted burnt sienna wash to get the tonal values in. I normally use several washes over the top before I start adding in fur mark fur lines. Just smoothing off the some of the distinct lines, making it a bit more blended in. And now I'm adding a diluted sepia wash to get the darkest values. Obviously this film's speeded up so if you're trying to paint along then please stop and start as need be. There is a reference photo and line drawing at the end of part two. I've ended up doing this one in two parts as it's quite a long video and I didn't want to go so fast it wasn't watchable so I've done it in part one and two so at the end of part two there is um, if you want to pause the video there are images of the photo and my line drawing that you can pause and screenshot if you'd like to use it alternatively you can join my Facebook group which would be lovely I've only just set it up and on there there'll be available PDFs of both the fox and the line drawing that you can download to use. The photo as I said at the beginning is copyright free from Pixabay and the line drawing I've done so that's copyright free too. Topping up my paints. So I'm now starting to put the lines in using both a bit of the burnt sienna around the eyes just to get the more of the sense of character around the eyes, but it will be a mixture lines now following the lines of the fur in the photo in both raw umber and burnt sienna. I'm using quite a small brush for this uh, it's a pro art miniature brush and it's a 10 stroke zero so it's quite a fine brush because it is quite fiddly to get the small lines in. When you're putting in the fur lines, um, as I said, follow the lines of the fur in the photographs and do a little bit crisscrossing as well so it's not too uniform as fur lines do crisscross. They don't go all in little lines, they overlap naturally 
I would say this is quite a long-winded process and I work from light to dark so I'm actually putting in some yellow ochre lines at the moment into the very lightest areas and then I'll go on to the raw umber, burnt sienna and then eventually to the sepia. I'll leave you to watch this, listen to some music and watch this as it takes quite some, a long time to paint. I must say it's interesting doing these videos. I've never done videos before in my life. Um, I'm using a video editing program called Klimchamp, Microsoft Klimchamp. So I've learned that from scratch fairly rapidly. I'm still learning features of it as well though and finding it's potentials and limitations talk over I managed to get myself a reasonable mic so I have got something to talk into but really weird sit in a room talking on yourself and then listen to, listening to yourself on playback you find oh where did that voice come from it's certainly not the one in my head Ugh. but getting used to listening to myself um, what else have I learned Oh, I've learned to do little short video clips to put up on social media to publicise my YouTube clips. And I've learned how to use a YouTube um, channel, set that up and upload videos. I must say it's quite a reasonably easy process. Um, hasn't been too challenging. But it's just the at the moment it's taking me an awful long time to do. Presumably as I go along, I'm gonna get 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 a bit quicker at it. Um, and I'm saying I'm too much. Sorry about that. Things I find are my camera keeps cutting out. It's quite a nice little camera. It's only a point and shoot one, but it's quite a high spec one. I've had for a, quite a long time, mainly because I enjoy taking close ups of little insects, and I wanted something that had a really high resolution to it so a few years back I did invest in a really good point and shoot camera but I do find it cuts out when I'm filming and I don't realize always and so I can end up missing bits or if it's the beginning part I can redo them but if it's the end part I end up missing bits out so it's been a real learning curve but really interesting and I certainly don't regret starting the YouTube channel and fully intend to carry on with it. I haven't decided yet what my next week one will be. I have a feeling I might do something to do with mice. I've already done a couple of pictures to do with mice and I quite like doing little field mice or harvest mice. So I think next week's will probably be to do with mice. I have a feeling, but wait and see. Okay, okay let's carry on.
just adding all the fur lines, hair lines into the tail. They're quite a bit longer than elsewhere, so make sure you make the shoe strokes longer and obviously at the right angle. You can only see part of the tail as it's coming out from behind the fox, so it's obviously flipping over slightly. Just adding in some tiny details on the edges of the ears. Still using the raw sienna at the moment. Sorry, raw umber. Obviously, I'm using Winsor Newton Cotman's paints as I said but you can use any watercolours most of them will have these basic colours that I'm using they're not anything special as far as the colours go and they're the sort of colours that will be in most sets adding in some more burnt sienna now obviously quite a bit of this as it is a red fox Sometimes in the really smaller areas around the face and nose, rather than strokes, I just do dots to get the little details in. Trying to bring the odd hair sticking out from the edge of the fox, but again, not all in a uniform angles, vary it slightly. Some areas I've got the paint closer together than, than others, or the strokes closer together than others, which creates a denser area of fur. Uh, I'm now adding in some slightly darker values using the burnt umber, which is slightly darker brown.
There is a lot, a lot of layering when you're doing an animal like a fox. So, obviously it's watercolours, so you're starting from light to dark. I have put washes underneath, so that it gives some of the depth as well. Okay, looking really closely at the reference photo. Definitely sort of darker clumps, so it's trying to put some strokes quite close together but leaving a lighter, almost like a line between them. Not making it too straight a line. There's quite a lot of dark in the legs and this bottom area. This is quite a long video and I didn't want to go too far so that you could actually see the strokes I was doing so that if you wanted to paint along you can pause it now and then and keep going along with me. So I've split it up into two parts so we're just coming to the end of part one and the rest will be available in part two. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe.